You're watching Single Process with Joe and Barb. We created this video series to help you navigate the very difficult process of divorce, and we hope that it helps. On this episode, we're going to talk about taxes. Bob, this was my idea to do an episode on taxes. You were not necessarily behind me. And actually, I was going to call in sick today because I uh, don't know anything about taxes. I haven't done my tax returns. I don't think ever. I mean, I think my ex-husband always took care of that part. I think that so many people find themselves on the outside of the tax world, letting somebody else take care of it. And then it's a bit of a rude awakening. Yeah. I suddenly had alimony, so I had to know what estimated taxes were, and I really did not know where yeah, to start. I don't start. know what you're talking about at all. <laughs> Luckily, we have Paul Piasecki with us here today, and Paul is a managing partner and a CPA with Piasecki & Company in Connecticut. Because of his years of experience in litigation, his tax practice has actually evolved into the divorce and mediation niche. Paul, thank you so much for being with us. Well, it's my Paul. pleasure. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Start us off. What are taxes? I'm kidding. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> what you know? Why does someone need to consider taxes as part of the divorce process? Well, one of the biggest changes I think that most people are going to find is when they go from we to me, is that taxes are a very dramatic. Um, uh, thing that they're going to just discover, and hopefully they don't discover it on April fourteenth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there is there something to the timing of this whole thing that people should think about. Like, if you're going to get divorced during the year, should you do it in the beginning of the year for tax purposes later? Well, that really doesn't matter because under the tax code, your filing status, which is how you file your tax return as married joint, married separate, single head of household, is determined on the last day of the year. Okay. So if you are married for the full year and you get to the courthouse on 1231 and you are divorced, that's your tax status for the entire year. So okay. major changes happen when, when uh, your tax status changes. Your tax rates can go up. They can go down. Most of the time, they will go up. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of changes that will happen depending on when you get okay, divorced. Okay. So I'm hearing from this that you need to engage with a accountant or tax professional right from the outset of your divorce. Right. It it is. It sounds like it would be a good idea to start getting advice right from the get go. That, that would that would be a great thing to do is to bring in your tax returns, have somebody take a look at them. Mm -hmm. um, possibly not at the very beginning, but just to see because really what's coming down, we're coming down to children and money. Okay. And money really can be determined on the tax return. So it helps to have somebody there to take a look at it and see what you have. Well, what if I have a formal separation agreement and I'm getting alimony while we're separated? That happens. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a tax issue? Well, the answer to any tax question that you'll ever hear, it, I ever get asked, is the answer is always, it depends. And that's exactly what happens here. If you are going to get what we call pendente lite alimony payments, um, what did the, you just say? <laughs> pendente lite, before the you order, speak pending the order. Pending the okay, yeah. so pre-alimony. So, right, because um, if if one party moves out, there's still expenses that need to be paid. Okay. So you might have to have some kind of a negotiation or an agreement to keep the flow of money coming in to support the household, support the children's expenses, just things like that. Okay. So many times, what will happen is somebody will move out and want to pay those payments and take a tax deduction for it because yep. the concept of alimony is that alimony is tax deductible to the person that pays it and tax includable mm -hmm. to the person who receives it. So if you think about that, now all of a sudden you're getting taxable income in a year where your tax situation is changing. So you may actually have a tax burden before you even really know it. In the process of getting the divorce agreement underway, what are we thinking about? I know there are deductions and there was some conversation when we were getting divorced about the, I'm taking the kids and I thought he was talking about custody. An exemption is a tax deduction. Uh, it lowers your taxable income by a certain number. And this is the number that changes every year. Each exemption you have currently is worth $4,050 if you need to know the exact number. Okay, so, it so will that reduce. means if I made X, I only have to pay tax on X minus $4,050, That, that right? could be correct, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. It depends. Oh, it depends. <laughs> I'm not liking these, it depends. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the real big sticking points we see, in especially high income, high net worth couples. 
is one person threatens to take the children and then a war breaks out. But the reality is... Is this saving you that much money? Well, the reality is, is if you're in the high income brackets, those exemptions are taken away from you. Oh. Okay. So you're fighting over nothing. What if you have no money? If you have no money, then they could be worth quite a bit because they're worth the $4,000. There's also child credits if, okay. if, if uh, the uh, parents are both working, mm -hmm. which could be worth $1,000 a child. Okay, okay, so then talk to me about alloc uh, unallocated and allocated alimony and what happens with the taxes on that. Okay. Well, basically, unallocated alimony or support is fully taxable. So you. unallocated okay. alimony is, there's just one, one you're getting monthly. divorced and you get one lump sum payment a month and it isn't like this is for child support, this is for alimony, is e that correct? Exactly right. Child support is not taxed. At all. At all. So, and you are, have the right where you have uh, minor children to get child support. What a lot of people will do is to do an unallocated order, which factors in uh, everything is going to be taxed includable to the receiver and tax deductible to the payer. So hold on, why would that make yeah. sense? So uh, to the if, receiver. if I would, I, I got alimony, why wouldn't I want to break it out into this is alimony, this is child support, because I don't pay tax on part of it, as opposed to paying tax on all of it. Why would I have agreed to that, yeah. which I did? <laughs> Another great question. <laughs> Um, we really want to look at what the level, well, one of the major reasons why you would do something like that mm -hmm. is let's say um, uh, the payer spouse is in a higher tax bracket, gets to deduct it. Receiving spouse is possibly in a lower tax bracket. Mm -hmm. So that means they would deduct it yep. at a higher number and the receiver would pay taxes on it at a lower number. So we've created dollars. Okay. For the and the IRS is okay with us. The IRS is fine dollars? with that as long as your court agreement says that. Okay. okay. How carefully does the IRS scrutinize your tax returns, mine versus my ex-spouse's post-divorce? I mean, is that something to worry about that you're both on the same page and recording the same thing? Yeah. Are often? we flagging them for audit? You are yeah. definitely flagging them for audit because one thing will pop up right away, and that's the amount of alimony because the payer is going to put your name and your social security number on the front of his, I say his, but their tax return. Yes. And you are going to pick it up and the IRS computers are going to match them. Okay. And if those numbers don't agree. And this is a sticky point we have every year trying to get both sides who can't get along to agree on this number. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we do want to make sure, one of the things I will always make sure is I don't care how we have to communicate and get the number is to make sure that they do agree. Okay. We find a lot of games get played towards the end of the year where maybe a, a, an alimony payment is paid a little bit early, dated December 31st. When it shouldn't have been paid it, till... Right, so okay. there's 13 oh, payments in one year and and then, uh, well, I only got so 12 payments. So we don't payments. match up at that point. Exactly, okay. right. so we're always very careful about matching those figures if up. If I have a tax attorney now, or not a tax attorney, I have an accountant now, is that someone I should use for my divorce, or do you recommend somebody that's certified in divorce work? Well, um, it really depends on being familiar with the divorce tax code. Okay. Okay. Um, so the first question is if you have somebody now that you're also using with your soon-to-be or ex-spouse. Right. Do you care sure using the same? I mean, it's yeah. nice that somebody knows both of your situations, yeah. but there seems like there's a conflict there, no? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Well, there is. Um, it really, uh, what I have found over the years, it depends on how people get divorced and whether that works or not. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if they tend to come through mediation or collaboration. Many times they have the tools to work together okay. and to and take and take advantage of the tax code and make sure that each other is getting the best that we can do. We do those tax returns. We okay. have quite a few of those. Okay. If they come through litigation, forget about it. Yeah, then you, get you, separate separate people. You, get, you get separate people. Okay. Right? Okay. It can work, this but great. Um, not usually. Okay. I mean, we'll get questions like, uh, what did that bastard make last year? <laughs> okay. It puts me in this a very This is a family difficult. video, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> so is, is, there, is there somewhere <laughs> that you can get a summary of this, you know, aside from, from your accountant, does the IRS provide any information on this? Yes. The IRS has a publica a free publication out there that's about 30 pages long. The IRS long. does oh, something God. free yeah, as do opposed some, they to do taking their gifts? Free. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be nice to the IRS. <laughs> but they have a great publication. It's 504, and it's available if you go to www.irs.gov. 504. 504. Okay. Okay. And and it's a relatively simple to read, but it'll answer all your questions about exemptions and who takes what when okay. and alimony.
testimony on allocated. So it's a, it's a good reference. So Paul, tell me what I do when I'm getting alimony. Nothing's being withheld by anybody, so I need to pay quarterly estimated tax. Tell me about that. That's correct. There are four payment dates. They're uh, April, June, September, and then January, where you would pay your estimated taxes with a voucher. So if anybody getting alimony, you should be making estimated tax payments. That's correct, yes. Okay. Because otherwise what? You get hit at the end of the year with some giant well, there unanticipated are penalties. The penalties. There right? are penalties okay. and interest for not doing that. There are certain rules that we can use to minimize the taxes. What we like to do with our clients is provide a tax calendar, which tells them what dates and how much. Okay. Because we can have them collect alimony <clears> but not have to make a big payment. Usually April 15th of every year is a massive it's painful day. Yeah. Yeah. Painful, painful day. About earlier. Because they're paying, they're paying back the prior year's taxes. They're making the first quarter of the new year's taxes. Yeah. Um, one other interesting thing is that alimony is considered earned income, so you can take an IRA deduction on it. Paul, thank you so much for being with us today. I think you've given us a ton of very useful advice and things to follow up on and look out for. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. You're great. Well, thank you for watching. You can find resources and links on this topic and more at singleprocess.me. And we'll put some information about the IRS on there as well.